Okay, welcome to another episode of the Second Opinion Loan Officer Podcast. My primary purpose with this podcast is to teach uh, mortgage loan officers how to do more content marketing. Content marketing, what is that? Well, it's really just having conversations about qualifying for a mortgage, but doing it in a way that consumers can find it on Google and YouTube when it's convenient for them, essentially creating the ultimate referral source, which is clones of you, which is your content, referring business back to yourself. Since the AI stuff has come out maybe the last six, seven months. I've really been diving into how to use these AI platforms to help create more content easier, more efficiently, and, and quite frankly, a higher quality of content than marketing content than a lot of times we can come up with on our own. We can be fairly creative on our own, but putting all the pieces together quickly, it takes a lot of time. And sometimes that burden is too high of a hurdle for a lot of you to, to dive into content marketing and to create consistently create content. So today what I'm going to focus on, and I haven't done one of these episodes in a little while, but I've got a bunch more in the hopper. I've been working on these really in-depth classes on four specific topics that, that I think are timely and relevant. If you're interested in that, you can reach out to me. I've been promoting them all over the place. I am charging for those classes, but these the podcast is always free. And quite frankly, I give you most of the secrets. I just don't package it all together in a nice, neat little package that you can take away and execute on. But I, am, I have been working on those quite a bit. So this is actually a result of some things that I realized and that I learned while while putting those classes together. And really, what we're going to talk about today is mortgage marketing and how to train chat GPT, even the free GPT. So you don't have to pay for chat GPT to be a highly effective mortgage marketer. You can use the free one 3.5. It's very effective. And when we train it properly, it's really good at this. It's good at creating content. Other platforms are good for other things. We'll cover those in other shows. But chat GPT, this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about training it to be an expert at content topics so that it can create a slew of content for us around those topics. Now, you've heard the word prompting, probably. Uh, a prompt is how ChatGPT learns what you want it to do. So a, ch a prompt is essentially the question that you ask it. Now, if you're like me, when you first started using ChatGPT or you first started using AI, you really, you use it as a search engine. So you go in there and you ask it a question like, can, what are the top five blog topics that first time home buyers should, should, or they care about or whatever. So give me a list of this. Tell me more about that. And you're just asking it a question. That is a prompt. It's just a very thin prompt. It's just, it's asking it to go in to its database and tell you what it knows about what it thinks you're asking it. And that's the beauty of all of this AI is the way that these algorithms work. I know it feels like magic. It feels like there's like Albert Einstein's inside your computer and telling you everything you want to know. But really, it's just a computer algorithm that tries to understand what you're asking it. Then it checks all of its information and it compiles, it observes and compiles its information and then delivers that answer to you in a way that sounds very intelligent, very human, and it comes very fast. But it's most, it's not always accurate. And quite honestly, your output or what you get out of AI completely depends on how you ask it, what you put into it. Output equals input. Go figure, right? That's the way everything works in, in life, right? What you put into it is what you get out of it. And it could not be more true with AI. What we're going to do 
is I'm going to show you three different ways to train ChatGPT to get better answers, to create more content for you, create more um, effective content, more accurate content. The three ways is we're going to teach it what you know. So you're going to teach it what you know about the topic and then ask it to create content. Then we're going to ask it what it knows, because remember, ChatGPT has a database of a bunch of knowledge. It's not connected to the Internet, but it has a bunch of information. It has a bunch of Internet data in it. And then we're going to feed it what is known. So we're going to teach it. We're going to ask it or we're going to feed it. And you can do a combination of all three of these, but I'm going to break each one of these down so you understand how they work. So the first one is to teach chat GPT. So you can either type in the prompt or you can transcribe it. You can, if there's a specific topic that you're talking about, you can just put it in your voice recorder, transcribe it into text, and then you can add it. You can also type it. Now, the cool thing about chat GPT and about these AI platforms is it'll accept a stream of consciousness. You don't have to write perfect articles. You don't have to write perfect social media posts. All you have to do is feed it the information and then ask it to craft that content out of the information that you gave it. So you can just go stream of consciousness with it. I'm a lot of times I ignore grammar and I'll just write, I'll just type in everything that I I know about a topic. A great example is one of my classes about the student loan payment crisis, which I'm recording this at the end of August of 2023. And in October of 2023, student loan payments are due again after being shut off with COVID in March of 2020. So that's going to cause a big, big issue. So what I did is I educated myself. I already have a lot of information about qualifying for a loan with student loans. I did a bunch of homework and then I just wrote stream of consciousness. Honestly, it was about 1500 to 2000 words. And I just wrote everything that I know about the topic. It didn't have to be in the right order. It didn't have to be, it didn't have to be the punctuation didn't have to be right. The grammar didn't have to be right. Just stream of consciousness, just throwing it in there. So when you do that, now chat GPT has this body of all of this information, and then you can ask it questions about the content that you put in, not even ask it questions. You can give it commands. You can say, write me a blog post about this topic, write me a Facebook post, write me a script for a two minute Instagram video, and it'll use what you gave it to create that content. And then it will, it'll produce that content. So that's the first way to train chat GPT. The second way to train chat GPT is to ask it. Now it's not connected to the internet. So it only has a knowledge base. When I say only. It has literally billions of data points up to September 2021. It has a snapshot of internet activity or of internet content up to September of 2021. So it doesn't really know anything new or current, but it knows everything about everything that was posted to the internet up to September, 2021. Obviously it's not everything about everything, but it's pretty darn close. Like you couldn't, it's highly unlikely that you could ask it a topic and it doesn't no, it doesn't have some information on it. Now, when you're asking chat GPT, so you're saying, what do you know about student loan, pay student loan payments you couldn't do? Because it only has knowledge up to September, 2021. But let's say a good example would be, oh, I don't know, choose a topic about first time home buyers. Right. So I want to write content about first time home buyers. So you start asking it, you say, can you give me as much information as you know about first time home buyers in today's market? And it's not going to know what today's market is, but you can ask it about first time home buyers after or as of 2021 or whatever. First time home buyer. 
activity has been pretty much the same. It's that millennial demographic. You've got your really late Gen Xers are starting to get into housing, but really your millennial demographic, and they've been out there for quite a while now. So it knows a lot of information. Now inquire about the answers. Don't just ask it one question. Don't just say, what do you know about millennial first time home buyers? Ask it, inquire about the questions, explore all of the angles, ask at what are the pain points of millennial first-time home buyers? What type of homes do millennial home buyers prefer? What type of what type of financing do millennial home buyers typically use? How do millennial home buyers? So I know from doing my homework and doing creating content, a lot of the millennial home buyers are using gift funds for down payment and closing costs. That's a very popular thing. Also, one of my classes, one of my paid classes is how to create a marketing campaign for millennials around new construction because I learned through doing homework through chat through AI platforms that millennials prefer new construction by 65%. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. So as you start to ask it questions and as it gives you answers, start inquiring about the answers that it's giving you. Ask it to expand on that because all of this, so with chat GPT, everything that's contained in one chat thread it knows and it remembers. So it's, it's if you start a new chat thread, it forgets everything. But you could literally have one chat thread that has thousands of prompts and content in it. And it's always going to draw from that 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 silo of knowledge or that silo of information to create content for you. So explore all of the angles, ask it questions about the answers that it gives you, build a body of work around the topic that you're interested in. And trust me, it knows a lot. Um, do not ever, and I've talked about this in a bunch of my other classes, but this is, if this is the first episode you're ever seeing, do not ever ask chat GPT for answers to questions. You don't already know the answer to it hallucinates a lot. It makes stuff up and you don't want to put it wrong information out there, especially when it comes to mortgage content and helping first time home buyers. Make sure that you're asking it stuff. That, and if you've been in the business for any period of time, I'd say longer than before the last refi boom. If you've done purchase money, then you understand some of this stuff. Ask it. It knows a tremendous amount. And then ask it about what it knows. Keep asking it more and keep diving into it. And that's how you build on that one. The next one is feed chat GPT. Now I did this when one of my classes I did on house hacking and, and house hacking was two different ways of house hacking and house hacking is essentially generating revenue from your owner occupied uh, home, not a rental property necessarily, but renting out parts of your property. So the first part we did was ADUs, accessory dwelling units, additional dwelling units, whatever you want to call it. That is a very popular topic. And what I did is I did internet searches and I used Google Bard because it's connected to the internet. And I found a bunch of articles with a bunch of different angles on ADUs. I found builders that specialize in ADUs that had whole pages about how to finance ADUs, which Mortgage marketers, if you're paying attention or if you didn't go to my class, ask me about those classes so we can give you access to those. But ADUs need a loan. So most of the time, these are cash out refinance opportunities. Also, I discovered that ADUs are a, are a pretty popular retirement strategy, like a financial planning retirement strategy. So a lot of these retirees are building a small ADU, living in the ADU and renting out their main home. So instead of having a fixed income, now they're generating an additional several thousand dollars a month off of their primary residence. And there's a bunch of different ways. But the point is, I, I found a bunch of different angles and a bunch of different opportunities. What kind of ADUs are there? Carriage houses, building a unit above a garage, finishing a basement, a detached ADU, an attached ADU. I found all of these different articles that specialized. I even looked up government 
um, websites about the zoning laws and the restrictions and the challenges, some of the legal stuff around ADUs. So I found all of these articles and then I copy and paste the articles into ChatGPT. Now, the key here is you have to tell ChatGPT, do not create output yet. Let me know you understand and you're ready for the next prompt. And so that's what you're doing. You're saying, here's an article that we're, I'm training you on this topic. And here's the first article. Do not create output yet. Wait for my, ask me, tell me when you're ready for the next prompt. Here's the next article. Do not create output yet. Tell me you're ready for the next prompt. Here's the next article. So for my my ADU class, I actually pasted six different articles. It was thousands and thousands of words. It was probably 10,000 words about ADUs. So then I could go in and I could ask it anything about ADUs. Hey, can you write me a blog post about ADUs as a retirement strategy? Can you write me a blog post about the different types of ADUs? Can you write me a blog post about the legal concerns about ADUs? Can you write me a blog post about how to finance ADUs? Can you write me social media posts about all this? Because it knows all of that because I trained it on that. So the whole point, as I mentioned in the beginning of the Second Opinion Loan Officer podcast, is that there are the chances of you having the very first conversation with a consumer about qualifying for a mortgage is probably slim and none, unless it's a personal referral. But even then, they probably had asked around for a few people until they were referred to you. So a second opinion loan officer is someone who is published content and created content that consumers can see so that they recognize that you're an expert and that you you have experience in your field and that you're somebody that they can, they quite frankly, they know and trust you before they reach out to you. So here's the bottom line. And I don't have to tell anybody this because everybody already knows we make money by having conversations about qualifying for a mortgage. Now, how we start those conversations, that's marketing and advertising. That's how we let people know that we have answers. And that's how we drive people to our answers. When you have conversations about qualifying for a mortgage, when we have conversations, that just generates business when it's convenient for us, right? Because we have to be there and we have to have a conversation. But when you create content, that generates business when it's convenient for the consumer. And that's why content marketing is so important. Being a second opinion specialist is not for everyone, but when you do it, um, th but that's why it's so effective because so many smart, experienced loan officers are keeping it all a secret. They're hoarding their knowledge and their experience. And the only way anybody knows is if they have a conversation with them. When you create content, then people can find you on Google, on YouTube, on social media, determine that they know and trust you, reach out to you, and then there is no competition when you're creating content because there is only one you. So be a second opinion specialist. It's not for everyone, but that's why it's so effective. It does take some time and it does take a little bit of effort. With what I just shared with you today, we just cut that effort down to almost nothing. Don't be afraid of these of these tools. Don't be afraid of these strategies. Get in there, start playing with it, start experimenting with it, and take your content game to the next level. So thanks for joining me, and we will see you next time.